Welcome to part 2 out of 5 short video tutorials on how to get started with Perceptive Labs. So, now you have successfully installed and ran Perceptive Labs. In this part, you're going to learn how to navigate within Perceptive Labs. We'll go over the main functionality and the UI. So let's get to it! The first thing you see when you enter Percept Labs is the overview. In here, you can keep track of all your different datasets and models. You can see things such as when the models were last trained, who updated them, and what status they currently have. Everything you would need for your modeling. It's currently empty because we haven't created a project yet. But before we do that, I want to show you the other side menus over to the left. Besides the overview, we have the model view. In here, you'll create your different models using the drag and drop tool which Percept Labs comes with. The training view lets you see a live update dashboard of how your model performs while it's training. The evaluate view lets you evaluate your models after the training has finished. And the deploy view lets you deploy the models in a few different ways. We currently have TensorFlow, FastAPI, and Gradio, with mo many more coming in. Let's go back to the overview and create a new project. So to create a new project, all you need to do is to press this Create Project button. And that will open up the Load Dataset. Now, a project consists of both a dataset and multiple models under it, making it data-centric and very easy to keep track of what models came from what data. When deciding what dataset to use, you can either use public datasets, which lets you choose from a variety of different datasets already in the Percept Labs format and ready to use. They're from popular libraries such as Kaggle, Hugging Face, and Papers with Code. You can also decide to use a local dataset, which asks you to upload a CSV file. The CSV file is the standard file format for Percept Labs. We're going to use a public dataset. But before we go into there, I just want to mention that we will soon see a little bit of an update to this view, letting you choose what type of problem you want to tackle before you choose your data. For this, though, let's just use the standard MNIST dataset. We press load to start downloading it. And as soon as it's finished, you can just press this Create button to start creating a model based on it. That will take you to the data wizard. In here, you get to define how you want your model to be created based on your data. What you do is, besides setting the name and the path, you set column by column if this data should go into the model or if it should go out of the model or be a target of the model. You can then also change the data type from images to masks to categorical to numerical to text. And you can also have multiple inputs for a multimodal model. The last thing you can do in this view is change the pre-processing settings over here. This is if you want to augment your data sets or reshape it, for example. When you're happy with your selection, you just press the Create button and it will take you to the model view. In the model view is where you'll be doing your modeling. You'll always get a model recommended straight from data wizard choices, so you'll always have a good baseline. But after that, it's up to you to modify it, add more layers, remove them, anything you would want. You can see some of the layers, or components as we call them, here on the workspace. You get a preview of each component, how its outputs looks like, as well as the dimension on top of it to easily keep track of the architecture. You can find more components here at the very top, ranging from processing components to deep learning components, different operations, and also a custom component in case you want to custom write a script. Pressing on a, pressing on a component will let you open the settings here over to the right. These are the standard settings for Keras or TensorFlow. And if you want more settings or change the component more than this, you can always open the code and directly modify this. If we were to, for example, introduce an error in the code, 
You'll also be alerted down here that something is wrong. And I'll highlight the row where it has gone wrong. In case you want to revert the component then, you just need to press this reset component button. I'll do it for you. After you're happy with your model, you can just press this run button here at the top. And you then get to choose a few settings, such as how long it should run, in other words, how many epochs, the batch size, the loss function, anything you would want to customize before you start the training. Once all of that is ready, you can just press this run model button and the training will start. However, that's something we're going to take in the next video. Before we end this one though, I want to show you two more things. First of all, we can now go back to the overview and see how it has populated. We'll see an MNIST digits here, which is our data sets, and our model 12, which is the model we just created. You can see also that it's I who created it and when it was created. And last thing is that if you ever have any questions or concerns or need help, you can press this little question mark at the very top. This will give you a drop down where you can get help with uh, onboarding, you can get tutorials, documentation, or get in contact with us. Okay, now you know the main parts of the Perceptilabs UI. If you want to learn more details, visit our website perceptilabs.com and check out the documentation page. If you have any questions, troubles, or suggestions, please visit our forum at forum.perceptilabs.com or reach out to me directly at our Slack channel, link down below. Now watch part 3, where we focus on the model building part and see how easy it is to build a model from scratch in Perceptilabs.